Tilt Brush. And today with teaching Tilt Brush, we're going to be talking about mixed reality videos. This is part of a series we're doing on how to do mixed reality videos yourself. We're basing it in Tilt Brush, but everything we do in this series will also work for other programs. So if you want to stream games or lectures or how-to videos, you'll be using the same types of tools. In the first video, it was an overview of the pieces you'll need, the software, the hardware, and the setup. For this video, we're going to take a much more detailed look. You can barely see that, so let me switch to a light tool. We're going to take a much more detailed look at the software we're going to use to do online streaming of mixed reality videos. Whether you're doing it for games, I forgot the T. There we go. For games or education, it's all going to be the same. There's really going to be four main pieces with three main programs you're going to be needing, depending on how you're attempting to distribute them and broadcast them. If you're going to be doing this live, like we do these classes, you're going to need four pieces. If you're just recording them for either upload to YouTube or your own distribution, the first three pieces are the ones you're going to need. So we're going to talk about all those where to get some, and some of the ones we're going to use. In our case, we're doing this everything through Tilt Brush, and we got our setup through the Steam system, Steam and Valve. So there are other ways to do this as well. This is just the example we're going to be using. So the part one is naturally the program you want to demonstrate. In our case, we're doing this as a Tilt Brush tutorial. So Tilt Brush is the program in question. Now, some programs are already set up to use extra cameras. For example, Tilt Brush has that spectator view setting, which is sort of a third person view of your artwork that you're working on, or maybe a second person view, depending on how we talk about it. So this means it's easy for another program to take control of that camera. So I can set where the view is in Tilt Brush, and then actually set up a real-world camera in that same position. So it's looking in the same direction as the virtual camera, and when I superimpose those two images together, we seem to fit and work together. So when I move my hand like that, the paint shows up in the appropriate place. So the main program I'm using is Tilt Brush. Many games do have that external camera built in as well, so many games can do this just as easily. So part one, the program you wish to use. It could be just a camera against a green screen, and I just want to film a lecture in front of a different background. That works too, but in any case, regardless of which primary program you're using, they're all going to use the same secondary piece, which is referred to as the compositor. Compositor. Combining the pieces compositing the pieces. So in this case, the compositor we're actually going to use is a program called Live. This is one that's available on Steam. This is one that's very straightforward and easy to use. This is one that's made to work directly with a lot of our favorite programs. So the compositor program we're going to use is called Live, and all it's doing is combining the external camera view with the virtual reality view inside your program. So let me get rid of that just so we can see, keep track of what we're doing. So these compositor programs, Live, for example, when I first fire it up, here's what the Live opening interface looks like. We're going to need to connect our VR headset I'm using Steam in this case, so activating the compositor will activate Steam VR. Because it's part of Steam, it's going to connect to my library and everything automatically as well. There are other compositors. All compositors will allow you to tell them which programs you want them to work with. This will also look for a camera source, whether you have a small webcam plugged in with USB, or even a nice actual camera plugged in via HDMI or through a camera card. This system will look for what are your main input to use with the game. So once you actually launch this compositor, the camera setup looks sort of like this. 
where you'll actually choose which input camera you want to use, whether it's the webcam or a video camera, that type of thing. In our case, we actually have a video camera connected through a capture device, an Elgato card. That's how it shows up when the compositor detects it. We could choose from different cameras, different resolutions, different frames per second. So depending on what you're filming or the quality of your device, if I'm just doing a little tiny USB webcam, if I'm just doing it for a head in the corner, I could do it at a smaller size, which allows for a better frames per second. So depending on the settings you need, this is where we prep the camera so it knows how things should look. We can also do calibration. Calibration, you can see how my hand control doesn't exactly line up with my real hand. This is where I would go to tweak that. This is where I go calibration to recalibrate the way things line up. But if they line up very well, then it's a very smooth and believable video that the person and the virtual reality are indeed mixed together. Keying is if you're using a green screen. I've actually, if we turn off tilt brush, I've got a big green wall behind me. This is how it knows what color to remove and replace with tilt brush. There are ways of doing this if you don't have a green screen. Some of the newer compositors will take a picture of your room and then when you stand in front of it, it knows what to remove from behind you. So there are some fairly advanced compositors. That one's a little more pressure on your computer, but if you can't afford a full studio setup, that's a way where we can still do these types of mixed reality videos. Once everything is set up, that's when we tell the compositor which game we want to use, combined with which camera, set to what resolution, that type of thing. And now we activate it. Activating it is what brings up the camera and brings up the game and begins this whole process. So these are the samples of what live looks like while we're doing these mixed reality videos. It works with most games, it works with many different software, different compositors work better with different programs. So depending on what you use, you may want to try out a couple of different ones. We settled on live mostly because everything is Steam, everything plays together fairly naturally right out of the box. Compositors to work with your program. These provide the output. These will then put the final video together but it won't do anything with it. It's just a broadcast out to your screen. So we do need this third piece. This third piece is called the broadcast software. There's a free one called the open broadcast software, OBS, which has all the basic tools you need at no cost. It's open source. There are other brand names versions. So for example, Streamlabs, OBS, gives you a few more tools if you're doing these online types of streams. These programs take your video and can combine it with other pieces. So for example, when we do teaching Tilt Brush, we have that logo of ours up in the top corner for the whole time. That is something we add in during this part of the process. These layers here are showing you what all the different pieces you want to use in your video. So if I wanted to do things, for example, sound, like microphone, yeah, for those of you watching live, you know why I'm talking about that. We can go in here to make sure these devices have been added and activated for when we make these videos. So the OBS software is where we're layering in all the components we want for our video. This program is also smart enough to connect to online services. So we do these live streams through Twitch TV. So we can tell this program our Twitch TV account and password. So when we tell it to go live, it'll connect directly to the internet and start live streaming right from here. I have full control over what's going into it, what it looks like, what it sounds like. So when we go live, everything's going to be taking place. This will also save your file. There's also a simple record button. So if all you want to do is save this thing for later, 
for more editing or for upload to a different location, this will save it on your system as well. Either way, you could even do both at the same time if you really want to. But these are the systems, this is the program that takes your compositor, puts in all the finished elements, and serves it up as the final video. You could do a text layer for titles and things. You could do multiple audio streams. So if I wanted background music in addition to my voice, I could layer in as many pieces as I want. Many of these services will even let you set up multiple setups. So if you're streaming different things, or if I wanted an intro screen, the main production, and then closing credits, I can actually set those things up as their own pieces. So you can really use this as a fairly high-end video editor, so you could take video of you and your friends having fun and do whatever you want, layer in backgrounds, that type of thing, and save them for later, or distribute them right then and there. In our case, we're using the process called Twitch for the live streaming. So we've got our Twitch account where we can set up descriptions, set up time schedules, that type of thing. So when we are ready to go live, we have full control over how the world is going to see it, keeping track of how many people are watching it, that type of thing. So depending on what you're doing your mixed reality for, if it's just for you and recording, we can stop with the OBS. This is all we need to get everything saved, to get everything produced. We only need the online accounts if we're actually doing online broadcast, online services. We have both youtube.com slash shameless mayhem and also Twitch TV slash shameless mayhem so that we can do both live productions as well as archive recorded productions of these things as well. Regardless of what you're doing it for, regardless of what your base program is, these are the pieces you need to do to make a mixed reality video. Compositor to combine the camera with the program, OBS for the final broadcast. Most compositors will help you in mixed reality by providing a camera view of what you see. So that's how I can tell what you see is what I see, is live itself has the camera, puts its view right where the camera is, so I can always keep track of what you see and what I see. So when it comes to games and things, I can make sure the perspective shows off what I'm trying to do the best. If you give this a try, let us know in the comments. Give us a link so we can show other people what you can do with these mixed reality series. Next episode is going to be about the hardware. We'll be talking about the cameras and the lights and the actual physical things you're going to need to do this as well. Whether you're using a little USB webcam or a big production video camera, we're going to go over what are the bare minimum you need for the hardware now that you've got your software requirements out of the way. Let us know in, the t in our comments if you have questions or if you want us to do more of a series on any of these pieces. So if you actually would like us to do a teaching live series or a teaching OBS series, we can do those. We just need to know what you guys want and what's popular. So let us know in the description, in the comments, tell your friends with share, subscribe so that you will let you know whenever we do another one of these videos, we do these every week. So hopefully we will see you every week. Have fun, enjoy Tilbrush.